Okay. This is uh, this is Corey, and Corey was a patient of ours, uh, age eight, and uh, he's now a. Uh, he, we did therapy for a year and a half. Um, he's now been away for ten years, nine years, uh, but. Um, uh, and we're back because he's having some difficulties with his academics in, in college. And so what we're doing is we're going to uh, show him for the first time, uh, that since he's uh, uh, been in this office, uh, the uh, binocular distance test. Corey, would you turn that over and tell me what you see? Is that, is that bugging you at all? Does that trouble you? Not really. I see like the little envelope thingy. You got that little square with an X on it, a little envelope-y kind of thing? Yeah. Um, kind of see like Diamond forming. A diamond? It's forming? Like right there, like X's around it. Yeah. Uh, now it's kind of bothering my eyes. Everything's like jumping. Diamond's like getting bigger. Getting big. Are there, is there any movement occurring on that? Yeah, like it looks like there's, I don't know if it's lighting right there, and also it looks like there's like color into it. There's colors in it? Probably a lot of lighting, but it's like, I don't know, it just seems like it's moving a lot. There's a lot of movement? Is like, it like a heart? Oh, you're the second one who's ever seen a heart. Cool. <laughs> you, you, do you see any things that look like ripples on the bottom down there? Or streaks? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Say like a Okay, what we're going to do is let me do this for you. Corey, we're going to take and we're going to cut the one eye. Now, I'm gonna, let me, I'll, I'll do the work here. Is it still trouble? Is it still bothering you? Or has it changed? It's got a little easier. But a little easier? Yeah. Is it get, getting the diamond still? Not necessarily the diamond, but I can still see all the movement. Hard to be getting the movement, okay? Yeah. okay? Let's switch this way. How about now? Mm, nothing really. Nothing? Uh, it's all gone? A little bit of movement, but not. Hey, and that's all we got to do. Just put a stick in your left eye, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Now let me ask you a question. You haven't told me about it, but let me ask. When you're reading, do, do the do the print in the book ever look like it moves? Mm, no, nah, not really. I don't. Okay. Do you do much reading? Uh, no. How long can you read before it bugs you? If it's like a book or an article or something online that I'm interested in, I can read forever. But if it's like score or something I don't like, I can read like two words and I'm done. So. How about like for your study? You're taking some. You're taking some social work. Yeah, social science. Of course, it's social science study. How long can you read one of those texts before you start losing it? A minute, if that. A minute. Okay. Like now taking a look at that. Are we back? Do we have the all some of those illusions, some of those mirages back? Yeah. Would you put these glasses on, please? Yeah. Does that change anything? Yeah. Everything looks clearer and brighter. I don't really see any. I don't see any. No shapes? No shapes? Okay. Would you like to know what's in those glasses? Yes. Those are Plano power lens prisms. That is, there's no power, no focusing power to them. All they are are lenses that are changing the way the light is coming into your eyes. And it's changing, we think, the ambience. It's changing the way the periphery looks, and that your brain is saying, gee, that's normal, that's new. So therefore, that's going to, should make a change. So let me have you do some reading. Would you take the glasses off? Now this is not a reading test. This is a vision test for the aliasing. But we're going to be using reading material to, to do that. Here's a story. Let's get you the story here about a beaver's home. Uh, is that uh, hold it wherever it's comfortable? If that's comfortable there, then we'll just we'll stick with that. And you go ahead and read that out loud, and then we'll have you put the glasses on. And we'll listen to you read. Go ahead. Beaver's home, called a lodge, always has a flooded lower room. These homes are built in large ponds, ponds or streams. Mud and sticks are the main building materials. One room is built above the water level, and another room is located under the water. Put your glasses on, please. Continue. The only way a beaver can get into the house is to submerge and enter through an opening in the flooded room. This room serves two purposes, a storage area and a sanctuary form from enemies. Corey. Yes. Do you hear a difference? Yeah. A little bit or a lot? A lot. I think that's going to help you with your studies. Yes. So do I. Take my place. Thank you.